My doctor actually advised me, Mr. Patadia, are you aware that you're in the category of being a pre-diabetic? Because I guarantee you a heart attack before the age of 60. It was throughout the pandemic. I was at home. The wheelie bin was empty. Me being a hero that I am, I went to pick it up and just flip it over like this. And it just went, it just snapped. All I could see was a tennis ball effect up here. No way. Seeing my wife do all the work at that time, for me, it wasn't right. Because we have both brought my son into this world. The minute he was born, I said, I've got to shift this weight. If you use an online company here, I'm going to stick to them. I've trusted their process since day one. And it's worked for me so far. People look at me in the gym, is that you? I go, yeah, because I haven't seen you for probably about eight, nine months. I didn't think I was going to get down to that weight. My checkpoint weight was 69. Before I started peak week, I got down to 66.7 kilos. You must have been flat as hell. Mate, I was flat as a pancake. I looked in the mirror every day. I could every day see lines appearing everywhere. Yeah. My abs, oblique, lower abs. I was getting lines on my shoulders when I was training. This is ridiculous. And I thought, this is not going to happen. My health is my key. It's my life. Being a daddy, running around with my son is going to be a big thing, you know? And I can't wait for him to say, daddy, daddy. Daddy, let's go to the gym. Okay, so Duran, let's take a let's take us back to 2021. What were the series of moments that led to your trigger moment to starting your your transformation journey? 2021, when I joined you guys, so it was January 2021. Um, 22, we, you joined. 21, I'm assuming you were thinking about it. Yes, you had yes, some that's trigger right. moment. Yes, so. yes, that's that's exactly it. So um, in June 2020. Throughout the pandemic, I had a distal bicep tear. It was a partial tear from years ago and it completely snapped. Um, obviously, that happened on a Thursday. On Sunday, I was under the operating theater getting it restitched because I had to get it done within two weeks. Otherwise, you can't pronate and supinate properly and to be able to get a full extension back. So that was one of the things that happened. Um, in November 2020, my doctor actually advised me so she's called me in November 2020. Bearing in mind, I had a blood test six months before that. Okay, so she'd been off sick for quite a while. She called me up and she said, Mr. Patadia, are you aware that you're uh, in the category of being a pre-diabetic? I was like, no. How am I supposed to be aware? You haven't told me. The blood test was six months ago. It's now November. And um, you're obviously letting me know that I'm a pre-diabetic. So she's registered me and then she's obviously asked me what, what my weight was and it was 120 kilos at that point. And she goes to me, obviously, you need to start losing weight as well. And she did a quick test over the phone with me because I knew what my blood pressure readings were. I've got a machine that I can read my blood pressure with. And she goes, just based on the calculations that we've done, um, she goes, I guarantee you a heart attack before the age of 60. And nobody knows if you're going to survive. So that was obviously that part of it. Now, bearing in mind, my wife's heavily pregnant. My little one was due December 2020. The weight gain had actually started before that because we had two miscarriages before that pregnancy that was successful. And, um, yeah, so, you know, come, come December, the little one was born. I've obviously had my arm reattached, the bicep reattached in June, been having renovation work done upstairs and a lot of things started getting to me. And my ankle went after the little one was born, my left ankle went, I had a stretch tendon on there, couldn't walk properly. And at this point, obviously I had to join one of the, um, the diabetic um, clinics online that you joined for therapy. I had my bloods done before that and they'd gone back down and she goes to me, you know what, I'm going to put in remission now. But she goes, you obviously need to lose weight. And she asked me why I'd obviously, my sugars were so high and I explained a series of events that I'd been through. One of the big killers was, two of the big killers was one, the distal bicep tear. Because I've been in and out of gyms for probably since, I don't know, mid-20s, early 20s. In fact, I got my first dumbbell set when I was probably about 15 years old. And um, so that was a big, big downer for me. So bearing in mind, there was that and then the pregnancy and you know, the stress of the pregnancy and stuff. And, you know, my son Kartik was born. And I said to myself, I need to lose weight now. I need to do it. Up until about, I think, five months ago, my wife didn't even know about the fact that the doctor had advised me about being at high risk, of having a heart attack. Didn't want to tell her throughout the pregnancy because who knows what that's going to happen, what, what that will do to her, right? And, um, yeah, so some of my colleagues friends rather had joined RNT and I'd seen their um, success and their weight loss and they used to talk about the things that they used to learn so me as a person I like theory I won't just do things for the sake of it but I like to learn things as well as I go along and um, obviously I learned this when I was with RNT I didn't know nothing about macros how they worked how to calculate them and stuff like that so that was a big bonus for me so and Darren, then, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've got so many things to ask you already um, that I want to just dive into before we get go into... Go for it, man. I think we're still in 2020. I think yeah. there's so many things to unpack. The first thing is how did bicep tear happen? 
a distal bicep tear is no joke. Yeah, 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 mate, it's no uh, joke. How did that even happen? And so, what were you doing? What was I doing? Believe it or not, I think it must have been a partial tear that I had for many years ago when I used to do a lot of heavy, heavy deadlifting. And because um, I remember that day, that time in Genesis, I felt a ping in my arm. Thought nothing of it. Two, three months later, carried on training. Obviously, stopped deadlifts because my side joint was quite, um, it's pretty much knackered, to be fair with you, my side joint now. And uh, so, so it was throughout the pandemic. I was at home and I literally went outside. The wheelie bin was empty. Me being a hero that I am, I went to pick it up and just flip it over like this. And it just went, it just snapped. All I could see was the tennis ball effect up here. No way. So the whole bicep came off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So literally it starts off there. That, that, yeah. And then there you can put, there's a scar there anyway. And uh, yeah, it literally, I, could, I literally felt it go from there. I, could, I literally looked up. I could see like a tennis ball up here. So for the listeners on wondering what this means, the bicep goes from the shoulder, the bicep goes from the shoulder joint down to your elbow. Just below your elbow, yeah. The bicep snaps the elbow and, and basically create a tennis ball near your shoulder. For those, right. uh, for those who are listening to this rather than watching. Yeah, so it's called a Popeye effect. If you ever Google distal bicep tear, it's called a Popeye effect, which looks, it looks like you've got a big bicep, a ball up here in your arm, but obviously that, that's exactly what it is. And it was just sitting up there. And so you pop this, just 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 taking the bins out. I was literally just I went to flip up the bin over because I wanted to empty it out to clean it out. Yeah, and uh, it just went bang. That was it. Game over. Wow. And then that was the first trigger. And then the second thing is you had a blood test, probably what back in March, April time. Found yeah. out the results around November. Yeah, this was before or after you knew you were pregnant. This, uh, so we've been trying for a child for a while anyway. Okay, and um, so obviously. So my wife was obviously, I got the results in November, 2020, which was the third trimester. Okay. And the baby was due January, I mean, December, 2020. Okay. So where did, when did the weight gain happen? When did he go up to 120 kilos? Because uh, that much is, it's not accidentally do a lie. That's a, that's a serious gain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. So it happened, obviously a lot of it happened throughout the pandemic, believe it or not. And just before that, because I think the year of us trying for a child as well had um and the miscarriages obviously mentally it affects you up it affects you as well and the comfort eating and the late nights and just sitting on the sofa gouging stuff that i shouldn't be eating and the weight gain obviously up until the pandemic i must have been hovering around about 96 kilos 95 96 kilos okay if actually you know probably a bit lighter than that and um because when i got married in december in november um, I was about 92 kilos and so bear in mind, I've worked in a city for over 20 years. Okay. And I've done 15,000 steps a day on average, probably I've gone from that to the pandemic. We were working from home, wake up in the morning, five meters to the office, sit there, work, finish, then have breakfast in the morning. I think, you know what? I'll eat something a bit later, eat something a bit later. Come lunchtime, I'm hungry. So I sit there and you start gouging on food because you, you've got so hungry now. You, while you're cooking, you're eating other crap. And um, I'd finish and think, you know what? I'm going to go and have a nap now. And I'd go to sleep, wake up in the evening, cook dinner, sit there, eat my dinner and watch TV. I just wouldn't step out for a whole week. And so obviously, you see the weight piling up after that, right? And then it becomes like a vicious circle. You're trying to lose weight. You've got other stuff going on mentally in your head as well. Yeah. And it just, yeah, mate, it just got harder. What was going on in your head? At that point, literally throughout the pandemic, when are we going to get back to normal life? More so than that, the baby, what's going to happen with the baby? We're going to be successful this time or not. And so bear in mind, I'm at home, working from home. Uh, My wife, she's pregnant, hormonal. I'm also a carer for an adult with a disability. So all of us are cooped up indoors. Yeah. And, um, yeah, mentally it's challenging you, dude. So it was around about after a little one was born, I think January, when I speak to my doctor, she said to me, you know what, I think you're coming down my depression. And um, it was it was all the triggers of being at home, the miscarriages and all the other challenges, the bicep tear, being a pre-diabetic. Being, bearing in mind, my mum and dad are diabetics. I've got a family full of diabetics. So I didn't want to go down that route, whatever happens, yeah? I'm trying to avoid that because... Let's face it, every single Asian that I know, someone in their family is always diabetic. And I think the whole, them not understanding about food, the diets they eat, the, the sweets that they eat and the timings and all sorts of things, lack of exercise doesn't help, right? 
and obviously we as a younger generation can hopefully help change that and educate them yeah but there's only so much you're going to say to people how did it feel um so you're in january and you're starting to lose weight but you've got this monumental journey ahead of you what did it feel like looking in the mirror at that oh, point mate i didn't want to look in the mirror it was a scary scary thought you know bearing in mind i'm just under six foot 120 kilos now i'm a big guy yeah 42 43 inch waist and um you know when you get to the stage where you can't buy clothes that fit you that's not right yeah you know you've got to do something but you know what it was difficult mate to be honest with you because the little one's just been born as well needed to help the wife out she had a cesarean as well so her mobility wasn't great at the beginning and um yeah so i just did what i had to do and when was it i think around about june it was 2021 i joined you guys in 2022 you know i was talking to my wife and she goes you know what you've been going to the gym your whole life she goes you can't stop now and i said i didn't want to stop and i hadn't stopped but i had to do my bit as a father to help her out as well so bear in mind there's only me and her obviously at home I've got a brother with a disability which i can't rely on and i've never ever reached out to extended family my sister helped out a lot at the beginning when we had the baby she was around every day helping cooking cleaning without her help and there's no way we'd be where we are now okay so come june 2021 started training started losing weight and i got down to i joined you guys i was about 105 kilos i think i got down to about 98 become december all the parties and all of the food and stuff like drinks and all that sort of stuff spiked straight up again and as a result of this my knees were hurting as well because of the weight and obviously i suffer from back problems that carrying that excess weight doesn't help ankles been playing up as well the best advice i was given by a lot of people professionals was doing just lose some weight she goes they they all said they all said it's going to help you out massively with your joints and everything and uh yeah come january what 2022 i looked you guys up and obviously looked at other people out there doing online coaching and stuff like that and i'd asked a lot of people about losing weight people were answering questions about losing weight and i learned this in my journey as well it's actually not difficult to do but the difficult part actually is keeping it off which no one wanted to speak to me about you guys have been talking about that and i'll do rate rate r&t for that as well and your philosophy behind it and you know the whole mind and how it works and your thought process and a lot of it is in the mind as well i believe and um but there was a lot of people out there that didn't know how to answer that question was my question was what do you do with the reverse diet how do you work your macros out what you're supposed to do and a lot of it was you just have to see where you end up like i said at the beginning of this i'm into theory and philosophy i like to learn and read so obviously you guys have obviously got a vast um, database there a lot of um, information that i actually have enjoyed reading as well as i've been on my journey with you guys amazing so it's quite not in part of triggers there's no like one trigger moment it was almost like a it's like a hell mary basically of, yep, yep if i want to came one yeah i want to live on and do this and we can probably talk about this later with regards to like how it's impacted you as a father um because something i can just hearing you say some of the stuff where you you tore your ankle you, you sprained your ankle one yep. month into yep. uh karthik being born i could imagine like how much how much you feel like you feel like a pain, right? You feel like you're being selfish burden, right? because yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. another That's burden, it. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even uh, carry him up the stairs. My ankle was that bad because of the stretch tendon I had. It was I was going undergoing physio and everything for it. How was it impacting your relationship with your wife when you were um, at this size and going through what you were going through? Was it a shared experience or was it um, something you were on a personal journey of? To be fair, you you know what between me and her, there's nothing but love, and that's the truth. We you know we have our days we're up and down as everyone does, right? Yeah. But um, at that weight, she still loved me. She loves me now, and there's there's been no difference. To be fair with you, what she's guess, seen. Go on, go on. No, go on. I was going to say what she's seen is me losing weight. My mindset's completely changed, completely, mm. and it's just I've shifted back to who I was probably about 15 years ago in my head. I guess an interesting point would be how did you feel as a husband when this was happening? Less so that relationship because. You know, the, the right person will love you no matter what, what's going exactly. on. But from a from a perspective of you as a man, did you did that impact you in any way? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, of course it would. Because think about it, my mobility's gone down. Yeah, ankle can't carry my son up the stairs properly. Knees were hurting. My right bi- bicep is obviously still. I was going through like a lot of um, physio and stuff through it. I was training it. I was trying not to use it too much because obviously it was hurting as well, and it still hurts to this day sometimes. And um, so seeing my wife do all the work at that time 
majority of it were where I wasn't able to carry him up the stairs and stuff like that. It, for me, it wasn't right because we've both brought my son into this world. We both together are going to raise him the right way and do it together as well because I want to remember everything that I do with him. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, you know, throughout this whole journey, she's obviously stood by me and supported me. Amazing. So we're coming to the end of 2021 and you've decided, um, you decided you want to take this more seriously. What was the, what was the reason for firstly seeking external uh, help? Because you dropped, say, a bit of weight on your own and then you reverse back up. Yeah. What made you think, right, I need to take this to the next level and, and really go with it all in? So me as an individual, I'm one of these guys, there's accountability now. If I'm paying for a service with someone, I use it. It's the same as I pay for a gym, I use it. I'm not one of these guys that will pay for a gym and not go. I'm paying for a service, okay? So I'm going to fully engage the service. And, um, mate, that's exactly what I did. I obviously signed up with you guys. And there was a bit of a, quite hairy moments at the beginning, like, you know, all the information overload that you were getting at the beginning. This day you're starting, this is your meal plan. You think, right, I've got to start getting on with this. And it was just, the whole thing was a rush. Yeah. Obviously, I've seen this all change now as well because um, my partner's obviously with um, you guys now and it's completely changed. But yeah. for me, this was the day it started it and this is your meal plan. I'm thinking, mate, I get up at four in the morning. I don't I don't sit down till eight o'clock at night. When am I going to get a chance to even go shopping? But, you know, obviously I dealt with whatever I had to do at the time. Yeah. So obviously your processes have changed now as well, all for the better. But um yeah, was, that, that's a great, great thing to talk about. Like, how, how did you deal with the overwhelm of, all right, I've got to change my entire life now, my yeah. training, my nutrition steps potentially were already part of your lifestyle, but all these things now to consider as well as a, a little one, a husband, etc. How did you deal with the initial, because that those first four weeks, I, in my opinion, are make or break. I think yeah, they're, mate, they're, it's they're overwhelming no matter what, right? It's, I felt sorry for my wife. Because there with me, I had to meal prep. She's with the little one. I'm trying to get my head around the meal prepping. And before all this R&T stuff started, we always used to cook together, eat together, eat the same foods together. Now I've had to go on my own journey. She's obviously understood the reason I've done this because I have to do this. You know, I'm 50 now and he's, he's going to be three this year, my son. Now I want to see him through university. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to live to that day where I see him through uni at least, if not longer. The thought of, you know before 60 having a heart attack wasn't right and I didn't want to leave anyone my wife especially alone with my little one because I can't I just yeah I don't want to talk about it it's quite a daunting topic really just very very morbid the thought of leaving her and my son at such a young age you know what I grew up with my parents around me I want him to grow up with his parents around him as well I mean there's no stronger why than what you just described yeah and I'm assuming that, that was that front of that mind all the time 100 the minute he was born I said I've got to shift this weight I need to do it, but it was finding the right time to execute all this now. Yeah. I needed that balance at home with the missus. I just needed um, things to start settling in with him. The baby was born. We needed to get back on, uh, on track with life, to be fair with you. And um, yeah, and it all just, the whole thing fell into place. What were some of your challenges in the, in the early days and the early months of, of RNT and, and, and your journey? I think the biggest challenge for me at the beginning of R and T was um it was you know what for me one of the biggest things was the, the meal the meal prepping on a Sunday mate it'd take me three, four hours to cook a week's worth of meals. Yeah. And um once I nailed it, and I still do it now, to be fair, even though in investment, I'm still doing it because I just find it works for me Monday to Friday, weekends I don't, but I could probably nail the whole week's worth of food now in an hour on a Sunday. I've got that little system in place. But that was obviously one of the biggest challenges, as well as obviously having the little one, doing my bit with my missus, equal time with my son, helping her out as much as I can. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so he was born in, what, December 2020. And I think it was like 11 months later, I went back in the office. So I spent 11 months with my son while he was born, at home with him as well. So um, it was it was challenging, you know, and... Like I said, I, yeah, I, there was times I had to become a bit selfish to do what I had to do to get where I am. And obviously, my wife completely gets it because without having done what I did, there's no way I would have got that, I think. And I don't know if selfish is the right term. My mindset had to shift a little bit. There, was, mm -hmm. there wasn't a day when I didn't think about her or my son and I mean, even my brother, the effects of all this around everyone in the house. But um, it's just something I had to do. 
How did you communicate that? Because I think one struggle a lot of people face is family uh, around, whether it's close or extended, but especially the close. If they're not on board, it can be very, it can be a very difficult journey. You, you know, you had everyone behind you, uh, yeah. but what was that communication like? Uh, explaining what you had to do at the beginning, it wasn't so bad. Believe it or not, people obviously, my immediates obviously understood that straight away. My wife obviously did as well. It was at the point when I got to about eighty kilos. Uh, maybe about 86 kilos, everyone started telling me to stop. And I was trying to explain to them this whole process, which you obviously know about, where I wanted to emit as much fat as possible at the beginning um, before I start my next journey. And, um, you know, I kept saying to them, just let me get down to this, my checkpoint weight. And the photo shoot happened. Things are going to start changing drastically with my food, my diet, how happy I was after when I was eating. And, um, and yeah, I got to a point so yeah, one of the challenges was when everyone was saying to me, mate, you need to stop now. You need to stop now. And I was like, you've obviously got no idea what I'm doing. And I was trying to educate them. This is, this is the process that I'm going to follow. This is the process that, you know, I've used an online company here. I'm going to stick to them. I've trusted their process since day one. And it's worked for me so far. And, um, you know, in the politest way, I turn around and say to them, you've been in the gym now five, six years. Have you changed? No. Something's not right there. If you've been trying to lose weight for this long and it's not happening or something's not right, as so you can clearly see, I have been following this process and it's obviously worked for me, right? So, um, yeah, you know, so I was lucky, like I said, lucky enough that my family understood what was going on. It was only towards the last, I don't know, 80 kilos down to 69, 66 kilos, whatever it was I got down to, where people started commenting, saying, you know what, enough now, you need to stop. They thought I was falling ill because of it and all sorts of things. But you know what? I had my wife back me 100% because she understood the process and she knew where I was, where I wanted to go and the end goal, what it is. Uh, as Kalyani said on a podcast recently, she said now she can walk around. When she walks around and sees people, she knows the distance. She can choose if she wants to introduce herself or not because she's lost so much weight. She's unrecognizable. Yeah, mate, I get the same thing. People look at me in the gym. I was in the gym this morning. So I went Genesis, and then from there I went down to um, my local Nuffield just to use the, the, the shower and the sauna and stuff. So I've come out of there, and this guy's looked at me. He's gone, is that you? I go, yeah, because I haven't seen you for probably about eight, nine months. And I go, yeah. He goes, how did you do it? And I said, mate, food is the way forward. It's all about food, steps, hydration. Did you use a company? I went, yeah, this is the company. I gave him uh, your website, gave him my referral code as well. And I said, mate, if you ever need any pointers, come talk to me. But um, I said, this is the company I use. I was skeptical at the beginning because you don't know. You see things advertised, you see all these transformations happening and you think, is it going to really work? Who knows, All right? But me as an individual, once I get my art, my mind into something, I'm going to make it happen. And I, I had no intentions of getting down to photo shoot lean. I wanted to stop at about 80 kilos, I think it was, 85 kilos. I was happy there. And then I got the bug and I thought, all right, you know what? This is easy, man. This weight's falling off now. Let's see what I can do. Then I got that nasty flu and I got really pissed off with the whole thing. And I said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And I even said to Ivan, I think and I'm thinking of backing out of this. And he said to me, whoa, whoa. He goes, just think about it over the weekend before we think about moving you into um, consolidation. After the weekend, I felt a bit better. I just did my own thing for a while. I was eating, not stupidly, I was mindful foods. I just needed to recuperate, get some energy back. And that flu literally knocked me out for two weeks. And it took me about another, I think, three weeks just to recover from the whole thing. And uh, at that point, I already said to Ivan, you know what? Let's do this, mate. Got all out attack. And he said to me, all right, then, let's book your photo shoot now. And I booked it. He goes, right, I got from this state to this state. And I went, are we going to make it? He goes, we're going to make it happen. And we did it, mate. I didn't think I was going to get down to that weight, which was my checkpoint weight was 69 kilos, right? Before I started peak week, I got down to 66.7 kilos. Yeah. I was just dropping a phenomenal amount of weight. Oh, you must have been flat as hell. Uh, Dude, you, you came in really crisp on the day. So that means you must have been really, really flat. Mate, I was flat as a pancake. I said to myself, there's no way <laughs> I'm going to get inflated. Do you remember I was asking you about that drink yeah, that you were drinking? And I was yeah, thinking, yeah. What, what does all this do? Because I looked in the mirror every day, mate, throughout the grind phase, I could every day see lines appearing everywhere. Yeah. My abs, oblique, lower abs, all that sort of stuff. My shoulders, I was getting lines on my shoulders when I was training, veins were popping out. And I'm like, mate, this is this is ridiculous. And I thought, this is not going to happen. The day after my photo shoot, obviously I went to the gym in the morning and I trained. 
And that was a day I wished my virtual was. I was so pumped up that morning there. Yeah, because that's I, good. <laughs> yeah, because because I'd finished the photo shoot. I'd come home and I'd gouge on all sorts of Jevron, all, all sorts of food that I haven't eaten for a while. I wouldn't say gouge, but I did. And in the afternoon, I went out for a pizza with the family and a salad. And I enjoyed it. I had a lot of carbs, obviously. But the next morning, when I got, I got up and I went to the gym and I trained and I looked in the mirror and I went, wow, look at me today even more. Even, don't get me wrong, the photo shoot, yeah. I never ever in my life thought I'd look like that. But let's talk about the grind then. So you've lost this initial 30 odd kilos and, and you said it kind of became just a thing where you were losing weight every week. You find your rhythm, find your flow, yep, caught yep. the bug. Uh, and then you decided, look, let's flip the switch. Let's talk talk about the grind process of going from, you know, decent shape. You know, no one would have batted an eyelid if you said, oh, I'm done now. But you yeah. said, right, I want to I want to go into the, the dark and dirty dungeons of of the mind and see what I'm capable of. Yeah. Talk about that process. Um, you know, what was the process of going from like 80 to 66, 67, um, and especially the last four to six weeks? No, I think the last, so getting from 80 to about 75 possibly or 73, I just followed um, my nutritional plan and the weight just kept falling off. Right. One of the, this, one of the hardest things I used to find was the weekends was getting my steps in. So bearing in mind, I allocated steps today, 10,000 steps. On a weekday, Monday and Friday, 15,000 steps. Easily, yeah? Pick up my son, walk home with him every day, stick him in the stroller and walk back walk back with him. But when it came to the, the grind phase or four weeks into the grind phase, Ivan said to me, right, two times a week cardio, three times a week, three times a week weight training, okay? Started doing that. Obviously, and every week I had to check in with him because he was obviously checking my weight. And um, so yeah, he was checking my weight and stuff. And um, I got to a point where I even said to him, am I going to make it? And obviously he looked at everything and he went right now, three times a week weight training. After the weight training sessions, I need you to do another 20 minutes cardio on those three days every day. Two other days of 45 minutes cardio. And I was probably hitting about 21,000 steps a day. Yeah. And bearing in mind, we had the steps challenge as well, right? With R&T. So that used to egg me on as well, because every day when you guys used to post up who was up there in the top 10, whatever it was, I was always up there. And that was another thing that motivated me every day to get on top of these steps. And I think that whole grind phase was, was it really was a dark stage because the last two weeks, I had to go and sleep in a spare room. Mattress was on the floor. I was grumpy. I was miserable, moody. It's an understatement. Because you remember calories were so low. I think I was on 1,150 calories, yeah? And bear in mind, these Apple watches aren't obviously that accurate. But when you look at your fitness, the thing on there, and it's telling you how many calories you've burned, and it's saying 4,096 on some days. And I'm thinking, what is that? How, how am I surviving? What was interesting was, mate, there were days I was in a dark, dark place, though. My sense of smell and heightened awareness was, I literally felt like I was with the devil at times. I honestly did like, yeah, where is this guy? He's around me. Talking about it right now, I've got goosebumps. Just thinking about it, uh, literally, yeah, yeah. It puts you in a real dark place. And um, mate, it kept grinding on, kept grinding on. Breakfasts were always on point, though. Um, it was my usual oats, peanut butter, protein powder, and some of that xanthan gum. You know, you thicken that shake up up to a thousand, uh, thousand milliliters, and make it some gloop, and you drink it to hold you. Lunch was lunch, and in the evening, believe it or not. You won't believe what I have dinner every day. I made myself a chicken curry every day in the evening, the last two weeks, because I was eating all the foods yeah. throughout this whole journey that I actually enjoyed eating, that I discovered and I perfected. It's one of the, one of your articles that you posted up about making a, you know, when you were doing your bodybuilding competition, you were having chicken curries every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum used to make them exactly the same way. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly the same way. Or, you know, if anything, I'd use maybe five grams of uh, olive oil in there, which is part of my fat allowance anyway, right? So uh, whatever I needed to do. But um, mate, the last every day, my dinner every day was a different curry of some sort with chicken, with other vegetables, whatever vegetables in there, I was throwing them in there. It's a game changer when you know how to cook, right? A hundred percent. It's, it, and you know what, this is the, another thing actually, you say that me and my wife we always love cooking together. And obviously, when I joined r and I had to do my own thing. And I obviously still go in there and help her out in the kitchen. And she said, no, no, you know what? I'm all right, I'll, I'll do it. And I happily always go in there and help. And I try holding out to later on in the day before I'd eat as well, just to see me through the evening, for the grind phase especially. I was keeping my dinners ready to be consumed, but not eat them until I'm really hungry. 
because at night time, if I'm hungry, I'm not sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'd make sure my dinner was already ready, just sitting there in the walk, ready. As soon as it was time to eat, it was there. I can go and dive into it, mate. And after that. Tell me about the conversations with the devil when you were like hearing the devil on the left, on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were dancing with the devil, what was going on? Like, what, was, what was going on in your mind? What were you learning about yourself? Discovery? Self-control was a big thing. Yeah. Learning to control my cravings was one of the biggest things because let's face it that's how i got to the size i was at i was always craving crap yeah so that was one, one of the things um learned to control my temper yeah because calories are so low very very irritable i was yeah so these were the um one of the main things and there was anything and everything would kick me off at that point because i was just mate you know when your calories are that low and you're just grumpy yeah it doesn't matter what anyone says it will just kick you off and you think, you know what, Darren, you've got to learn to control this. You cannot let this get to you. You look over to your left and you think, he, he, he's laughing at me. Look over there, there's another one laughing at me over there. And you think, you know what, I'm better than both of you guys. I'm not going to do this. Just take a deep breath, breathe, compose, mm. and get on with it. But that whole grind phase, though, it was, uh, if I look back at it now, it was actually quite funny, but it was dark. Yeah. And um, it was very, very challenging, you know, and, when you look at this, and it's something that you actually said the other day on one of the, the one of the WhatsApp group, uh, one of the people that are in consolidation, about their subjective markers not getting low. And I didn't know why they'd gone that low. And um, I didn't realize it was because of body fat and stuff like that. And yeah, literally, my, all my markers were probably at one, if not yeah. zero. And, um, you know, you look at your, your Renfo scales and you start off and your body fat percentage is high. I still remember the day I went for my photo shoot. and um, I was showing at 11.6%. Obviously, they're not accurate, but remember, for me, it's just a tool that I use for accountability throughout the whole process as a guideline. As long as it kept going down, I was happy with it, right? Well, I don't, who knows what my body fat percentage was, but I didn't know until that day why those subjective markers are going. It, you're probably right, because towards the end of it, yeah, the leaner I was getting, I was feeling cold all the time, hands were getting cold all the time, and Mate, I was sitting in the office rubbing my hands, keeping them warm, and I was wearing body jack, body warmers at all sorts at one point just to keep myself there. I mean, your checkpoint weight is always going to be determined by, um, you know, firstly, how far you can go, but also the, the more muscle you have generally, um, the, the deeper you can go because you can go even leaner and leaner. Whereas for yeah. people that don't have much muscle, there's a point of diminishing returns where you end up just looking quite skinny. Yeah. You're a guy that, because you're also probably, a, a, you know, you're a big guy who had also been training um for, for all his life you had a lot of muscle underneath you so you could push even further and further and further and when the problem is as you get deeper and deeper and deeper those those markers and for people listening it's it's mood hunger uh mood hunger stress libido and uh, sleep those markers are going to get shot sweet sleep quality they can get shot as you go down so yeah you, you're almost like a, you, you're, you're bottomed out and yeah. that's why you need to be here at fours it took me Interestingly, the reason why we actually found out what those numbers were, and we, we decided on two weeks or four, we only actually discovered this last year when I was doing, uh, when I came out of my consolidation, it wasn't until um, around September, I said to the guys, I think I'm finally feeling normal again. And they were like, that's really interesting. And then at that same time, it was Ed who said, yeah, I think um, a good consolidation is about two weeks at fours. Look back at my data. And it wasn't until that happened that, I'd felt normal again. And I was like, that makes yeah. so much sense. Until then, it took me about six months to feel normal again because I was so far in the really? hole. Like I was so far in the hole. Um, and I also held on to it too long. That's another mistake I made is I held on to being shredded for like eight weeks. <laughs> so oh, really? Just like, just stayed super lean for too long. Um, didn't, I didn't gain a single ounce. And then I was like, you know, I just can pull myself out of it. And then I realized these, these markers and how important they are. Yeah, I I literally had no idea. You know what? Because you, you, every Sunday you've obviously got to fill out the markers, and you, I was, I was still obviously ticking all the boxes. And then you start realizing, as you're in the the grind phase in the last obviously weeks, four to six weeks, those markers are going lower and lower and lower. And you're thinking, all right, what's going on here? It's only up until last week when you were speaking about it on the on the WhatsApp group. I was like, oh, all right, it says all you know where, where you've been, body fat and all sorts. I was thinking, shit, that bad. <laughs> and, but you're right though I think up until it might take about three weeks for stuff to start coming back for me 
Yeah. And um, I mean, your reverse was spot on. You, you know, you accepted going into maintenance. You, you knew what was coming. You, you knew what was coming, and eyes open, and you, and you gained the body. I embraced fat it. Really yeah, well. I embraced it, and you know what I did? I just followed what I was told to do. Didn't do nothing stupid. Yeah. And uh, mate, I'm happy where I am now. You know. How did it feel on uh, photo shoot day when you hit 68, 69 kilos? You walked into the gym, saw that picture taken. Mate, smiled. The smile, is, mate. It's not if it's an understatement. You, I couldn't stop grinning after that. I just couldn't stop smiling. I did because you didn't. You know what? You don't look. You don't think you're going to look like this, yeah? Until you're under the lights and the camera, yeah. The preparation, even at the preparation for the photo shoot, going for the spray tan, the waxing, all that sort of stuff. You're like, wow, this is actually quite funny. This is doing all this. I never ever in my life thought I'd go for a spray tan, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But when you're, um, yeah, when you're there and you're doing your first pose. And you, you know, the photographer shows you the picture and you think, what is that me? That's and just the, the whole time I was with him, I just kept grinning. Couldn't stop smiling. Which I can't, I don't know what to say. It was, it honestly was one of the best days of my life. One of them, yeah. Obviously, the day I got married was another one. The day a son was born. I've got, it's, it's a milestone for me to hit that at my age. Remember, I'm 50 years now, 50 years old as well. And uh, to get to that photo shoot lean at that age, I, I didn't honestly think I was going to do it. And, uh, what do you say to other like other men and women in their late forties, early fifties, who are at that similar sort of crisis point where the health may have completely slid? They've had some markers, they've had some scares, but they just think, "I'm going to undo thirty years of bad habits here." What am I going to say? Truthfully, age is nothing but a number now. I never used to believe that, but I do. With the right um coaching and training obviously I joined you guys for a reason anything's possible out there just don't ever say no never say never that's what I always used to say and um, anyone listening out there it's honestly never too late you can do this and do you think it's more important at, at, at your age oh mate 100%. if you look back over the years yeah yeah 100% back in the you know when, you, when you're young you're not overly bothered you recover quickly from injuries and all that sort of stuff. But as I've got older as well, I wanted to keep my strength there, mobility. Mobility is a very big thing for me now. I haven't been able to move freely, full range of motion. And um, yeah, it's um, it's a big thing now. For me, anyone at any age, especially the older you get, I think it's vital that you guys keep moving. Movement is always medicine. I've always believed in that. And um, the days when I've been stuck at home for two, three days, I feel like I've seized up. I can't, I can't handle it anymore. What no. advice would you, what advice would you give to your forty eight year olds like you know stuck in lockdown, hundred and twenty kilos? Do you ever have conversations with that guy and think about that guy? Do you recognize do. that guy? Like a couple of different yeah. questions there, mate. I don't recognize him when I look at him in the picture in the pictures. I think you know what? Who is this guy? When I look at my pictures from then and now, I'm a different guy. I don't I don't look the same? Do you remember what you said to me? When you were on, I was on the bike pedaling away doing my cardio, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you and you said to me, "He goes, you look like a completely different guy from when you joined." And I didn't realize until that day is when I did the comparison, and I said, "Oh my god, you look like an athlete in that picture, mate." Yeah, there was a guy that was filled. The guy that did that photograph is a professional bodybuilder. Yeah, was he? Now, what was he saying? He goes, "You look like a, <laughs> Yeah, he goes to me, "You look like some CrossFit champion at the moment." The way, the way you are, he goes, "You're going for it as well." And uh, but yeah, anyone who's listening out there, just. Don't hesitate. Take the jump. Do it because I did it. So can you. Just you know what you need to do. It health is key now, right? And it's about that longevity of life as well. And um, who knows when we're going to go, regardless of this planet. But we still have that control over our health, what we can and can't do in terms of exercise, diet, nutrition, water, mobility. Do it. You know, it is a big thing. Tell us about your consolidation and, and early investment. Um, one thing you mentioned earlier was for you, it was more important to figure out what to do after than, yeah. than getting the weight off. Describe that journey and and some of the challenges, some of the surprising elements of it as well, because you hit your checkpoint, what is it? May. So yeah, May. Mid, Mid-May. We're now recording this end of July. Yep. Um, so consolidation for me, one of the things that for me was, because I've been on a diet for so long, I had a list of foods that I wanted to go and eat. Okay. Bearing in mind, I'd read your article about 10 times before I even got to checkpoint about things to avoid death by a thousand cuts or whatever it was as well. There was that and that and um, you gaining your seven kilos in seven days that I've still got that vision 
of you from having your abs to that pot belly. I'm thinking, you know what? I don't want to gain seven kilos in seven days. I still, I've just gained seven kilos now in two, two months. Yeah. And um, those foods that I wanted to go and eat, I still haven't eaten, you know that, because I don't crave them anymore. They're there. So in consolidation, there was all these things that I wanted to eat. I wanted to eat this. I wanted to eat that. And one of the things I wanted to eat actually on the day of my checkpoint of the photo shoot was I wanted to go out for a dessert parlor to eat uh, a warm brownie with some ice cream and some crepes and waffles. Still haven't done it. And do you know why? Because I know it's going to be there for the rest of my life whenever I need it. It's going to be there. You know, it's not that I haven't gone to eat it. I've just chosen not to eat it. One of the reasons I haven't done it because my wife's for you guys now. And she's getting on with her journey as well. And I could go happily and do it, but didn't want to do it. But um, so, yeah, so the journey into consolidation was an interesting one because as soon as your food starts coming in, your calories go up, the smiles were there straight away. I was buzzing every day. I was grinning. I was just smiling every day because the food's there. And you think, wow, and, you know, you wake up every day and you feel like um, endorphins are there the minute you get up, the minute you eat in a nice, satisfying meal. and um, yeah, as each day went on, I was obviously communicating with my coach, Ivan, and it increased my calories. I think once, we think we increased my calories, I think twice it was or three times in consolidation. And so for me, it's, again, like I said, I followed what you guys said in your textbook, in your book, what to do, how to do it, and how to tackle it all, okay? And obviously, I kept saying to my wife as well, I'm not out of the woods yet. I don't want to start packing on this weight. I've got a lifetime to eat all these foods, and I can do. The good thing for me was, as soon as I hit consolidation, every weekend it's been a social event, okay? So I've had to go out there every weekend and deal with the one plate rule. Breakfast has always been my, my standard breakfast, which I love. But um, yeah, for me, lunches and dinners have always been one plate rule, just mindful about what I'm eating. And uh, yeah, I hit that sweet spot, you know? And then the minute you enter base camp, as you said, you start exploring more, don't you? Adventuring out, looking for other foods. One of the things I had to do in consolidation is I had to start re-educating myself with other foods that I haven't eaten for ages. Yeah, like Indian foods especially, or the dip lentils. Um, even the quantity of foods, at, from going from 1,150 calories to 2,400 calories, there's a lot of, there's a big difference, right? In terms of the volume of food that you can eat. So yeah, that was one of the things I had to um, tell myself was, doing. you know what, you can eat this. You're not going to get fat. Your mindset has now changed from the aesthetic look to performance. And, and that's another thing in consolidation. When you start seeing your lifts increasing in the gym and things are getting easier and your recovery is getting a lot better, your mindset will naturally, well, it has for me, it shifted for me anyway, because I've obviously come from the background where I used to go to the gym quite regularly. And I do want to get strong again, obviously not an aggressive rate of packing on muscle now, but something that I can sustain at these calories that I'm at, believe it or not, because the volume of food that I eat is it's quite a fair amount, to be fair with you. And there are days and I have to look at my plate and I think it's a lot of food there. And um, it, it is a lot of food, you know. Sometimes you look at it, you think 350 grams of potato. That's a lot of potato. Yeah. yeah. Good problems. Huh? Yeah. Good yeah, problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all good problems. Yeah. You know, all of it. Um, I've embraced all of it. So consolidation for me was a very interesting one. And um, as I was saying earlier on today's call, actually, investment for me, I'm, I'm enjoying it, you know. I'm enjoying going to the gym now. Every time I go there, I, get strong, I can see myself getting stronger. Lifts are getting better. I've learned how to do um, RDLs now. I haven't done an RDL since my, my back went from uh, deadlift days. I haven't done anything nice. like that at all. So obviously Ivan's been coaching me with that as well. And uh, yeah. What about those, um, you know, late night TV, you're tired from work, um, you're chilling out. And you, this is one of the reasons why you gained in the first place, where you had this habit of sort of eating when you're on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there's no goal of a checkpoint or a photo shoot, that, those sorts of habits can easily creep in. That death by a thousand cuts happens one night, then two nights. The next thing you know, you're back to square one. Yeah. Are you having that battle when you're on the sofa, when you're in that scenario? Or is, yeah. you know, what, what we describe that? Because I think that's where a lot of people struggle with. And I think <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting. So for me, you're, you're, you're right. You know, you know, it's funny you say this. The, the first week I was given the, my consolidation menu, I thought, oh, I got all these calories. I didn't know what to do with them. And you know what I put in my in my food plan? Dark chocolate digestives because I'd missed them so much. Ooh, they're dangerous yeah. though. Though. Yeah, yeah, mate, they are dangerous. Don't get me wrong. And it was, One, it was quite two. It was about I was actually able to have about four or five of them, uh, you know, in the evenings with a cup of tea, and it was great. But then do you know what? I started to say to oh, my coach, Ivan, that, you know what, I'm getting hungry, I'm getting hungry. 
Okay. And he said to me, I didn't want to say this to you at the beginning because obviously you've come out of this huge fat loss phase and you've been on this journey for 18 months. And, um, but he goes, knock these out the window. He goes, <laughs> I thought, all right. He goes, you need more, eat more fiber and vegetables and stuff like that. So I think I have 300 grams of veg a day now with my lunch and my dinner. Yeah. yeah. And um, believe it or not, I've still got room to have two biscuits a day if I want, if I choose to now, not because I, I can't. It's if I choose to, not every day actually, but sit there on the sofa anymore in the evenings and even have a cup of tea and biscuits. Okay. But you've also got to bear in mind those late nights are done for me. I get up at four, 10 past four every day in the morning. My little one on, on a weekend, he's up by six o'clock in the morning, 6.30. Yeah, there's no lines for us. In fact, ever since he's been born, he's always woken up between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m. And it's still, no, nothing's changed with him. Yeah. So getting to bed, and getting a seven, eight hours sleep in are important. So, um, what you know, time are you in bed then for four ten wake up? Uh, nine, nine thirty. Okay. Yeah. I need, yeah, I need to get a sleep, sleep, even on a Sunday morning now. If I go to the gym, everyone's asleep. I'm in the gym at half five in the morning. Get it over and done with because it sets the tone for the day. Yeah. Go in. So when I get up, everyone's come downstairs. Daddy, daddy, daddy. He's there. Daddy, you know. Calling me out, he's excited to see me. Sit there, he has his breakfast with me. I sit there and he says to me, Daddy, go get your breakfast and go get mine. I sit there with him. He's having his bowl of cornflakes. I'm sitting there chomping my porridge. And uh, mate, all good, you know. Best of both worlds, right? But yeah, go, so going to bed, those late nights, were, the minute he was born, those late nights were done. Because yeah, you know what it's like. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not, mate. You, you know what it's like. I don't know what Sia's like when she wakes up and stuff, what time she wakes up. It's about similar to what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So at the beginning, he was actually really, really good. It was after six months, he started waking up throughout the night and there was all sorts of things that transitioning, he was transitioning into. And now, obviously, don't want to jinx it, mate, but he sleeps for the night. Sometimes wakes up for like a minute, he goes back to sleep. Nice. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> touch wood on that. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, you know what? Everyone everyone said to me at the beginning, oh, mate, you're going to have no sleep. You're going to have sleepless nights. He was, mate, he yeah. was gold, he was, you know. The first six months were bliss with him. The six months afters were hard work. Up until I think I think the last three to four months they've been great. Don't want to jinx yeah. it again, fingers crossed. But from the six months up until the last, because there's always some sort of change that they're going through. The kids are, yeah. Psychologically, they'll always affect them. It affects their sleep patterns. They talk in their sleep. They giggle in their sleep. They scream in their sleep. You never know what they're going through or what they've done throughout the day. And the whole thing's like a roller coaster. When their eyes are closed, they're seeing all these things back to them. So, um, yeah. well, um, one thing you said is uh, this is an 18 month journey of losing the actual weight. Yeah. Um, and you said you had all these foods piled up. Um, how did you get your head around the idea of losing weight for 18 months and staying on the course? Because that's a long time to be in a deficit, whether you had a few breaks here and there, but that's a long time to get your head around. Yeah. Someone listening Thanks. in a similar boat, all right, I'm 100 odd kilos. I know I need to lose 30 plus kilos. Yep. Might take me over a year. Mate, those 18 months could have been done, I reckon, in a year had I just stuck to the plan, which is what I keep saying on the calls now. Go in there, attack it, just get in and out of this whole phase. Because the 18 months that I was on the diet was miserable, you know. And this is the reason why I think the last three months I had to say to my wife as well, all the social events you need to go to, you can go to. I'm not coming. If I have to come, I'm bringing my own foods now. Enough is enough. I can't do it anymore. I need to get on with my life. And that's exactly it, yeah. So anyone that wants to um, go on one of these diets, lose 30 kilos over 12 months, you can do it, yeah. But remember... The more you faff around, the longer it's going to take. You don't want to be there. You just need to get, as the Ed always says, get in and out of the grind phase. Just do it as soon as you can. You know what you need to do. The quickest way to move forward is just get it completed as soon as you can and move on. The 18 months of hard work, though, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it again. And um, <clears throat> the next time I do a photo shoot, I know exactly what I need to do. And I'm just going to go out all attack on it now. Mindset's mm -hmm. there. The wife's backing's there. We know what, ha what needs to happen. And we're going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you never know, man. She, oh, yeah, I don't know if she was going to do the photo shoot, but um, that's up to her, really. Um, have you had your bloods done since uh, since you've lost all this weight? I had my bloods done, I'd say, when I was probably about 80 kilos. So my sugars and stuff were all perfect. My cholesterol has always been just below borderline. It's been like that for a long time. So, um, but um, yeah, in terms of that, yeah, the, throughout the 18 months, I think I had my bloods done twice. They've been consistent. My sugars were the biggest concern for me and I've always been below. 
as a normal just a normal person now. So you're no longer pre pre diabetic. Oh uh, no, no, I got signed off pretty much. I think even before I joined you guys, they had already signed me off because I'd explained to them why I packed on the weight. And from the next blood test I had after that, she goes to me, "Yeah, you know what? You don't need to be here anymore." But she goes, "Just a good measure. I still want you to go for your uh, annual uh, HbA1c blood test, which I do, and it's all good, you know." Perfect. So, Darren, how's the physical being the vehicle for you? Oh, mate, that physical transformation. I didn't think I would have done what he did to me. Um, seeing that weight loss and seeing your figure change every day, especially when you look in front of the mirror, when you wake up in the morning and you see that scale going down and down and down, motivation was sky high. Okay. My mindset shift, the physical, again, transformation is my whole mindset shifted from who I was to what I am now. The way I think, the way I act, the way I behave as well. One of the big things for me was when I was overweight, I was very, very moody. I don't even have mood swings anymore unless I'm cranked up with something that's going on in my life with work or whatever. And again, that doesn't really get to me too much. And um, my mental health, biggest thing ever that changed. I don't let anything get to me anymore because it's not worth it. Yeah, My health is my key. It's my life. My health is there for me my family, right? Without that, you're nobody. Without your mental health, you're nobody. Yeah. And the minute that my doctor said to me, I think it was around January 2021, and she obviously said to me, that I think you're suffering from uh, mild depression. And I obviously had some counseling with some uh, mental health advisors for a series of uh, months. Yeah, all that changed, you know, and um, I don't know what to say. It's, mate, the whole thing has just been shocking. I didn't think from having such a physical transformation, all these things would have got affected. and. Um, yeah, every day I wake up with natural, I'm buzzing with endorphins, I just go mad every day. And I actually, I, I wake up every day, I'm buzzing, mate. I just wake up and I'm grinning every day. Even now, when I wake up and I look in the mirror and I think, wow, is that me? Even today, when I trained and looked in the mirror afterwards and I had this massive pump going on, and I was like, whoa, look at that today. And uh, it, it does, it, it eggs you along to keep doing it, especially when people see you and they think, dude, is that you? But yeah, what, you know, what's been going on? And I showed him the picture as well. So this is who I was. The comparison, that black and white one I sent you for me. They look at it and they think, wow, is that really us? They, they can't believe that was me 18 months ago. You know, it's a shocker. So the whole physical transformation for me was um, massive. The big, big key thing here was my mental health has changed massively. And as a result of my mindset changing, my wife's changed her mindset. She, her mindset's always been there. I've not influenced her, but she's seen my happiness in the whole journey. Which is the reason why I joined you guys, because you get to a stage in your life where you, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and it's not working, right? You need professional help. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I took the plunge and I'm I'm grateful I did, you know. Obviously, and after the first year, I signed up for another year and my wife said to me, you know what? Sign up for the third year as well. She's she's the one that paid for it. Because like you said in one of your articles, the longer you keep it off, the better it is, right? So uh the aim is to keep it off for life. That's the truth. Tell us about that. What was your the, the decision around buying the two-year bundle, going year two and three in one what go. Was, what was the decision, mate? It saved me money as well. <laughs> that was one of the things, right, believe it or not. And believe it or not, everyone yeah. obviously thinks about it. Financially, it does impact you because it's not cheap. But then if you put it into the context of your health, your life's obviously worth a lot more, right? If you think about it, it's the same as I used to ride motorbikes, yeah? You go into a motorbike shop and you say to them, how much is a good helmet? The first thing he said to me was, how much do you value your life? Well, what are you going to say? Yeah. Now you flip that around, you put that into context about your health now. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, you know what? There's obviously affordability and what you can afford as well. And obviously at that time we did it and there was obviously a discount involved as well. Right. And um, it's not only that, I've honestly enjoyed my journey with you guys. And I like, I enjoy joining those uh, Zoom calls. And I listen to all the, the, you know, all the new people that have joined as well now. And I can relate to everything that they're saying. I, sometimes I sit there obviously silently and I just listen to them and I, I grin and, you know, and I think, yeah, you know what? I've been down there. I know this. I know that. I've been here. I'm ex I've experienced all this. And I'm excited for everyone that decides to do it, you know? But yeah, I, I guess, you know, that for me to sign up for the second year, I had to do it. There was no, there was no doubt about it because I hadn't hit checkpoint yet. I'd started that journey and I not faffed around the first year, I would have hit checkpoint. But then not only hitting checkpoint, it was consolidation and investment. And maybe I could have completed all that in the second year. I don't know. But obviously, for me now, it's um, the third year. I want to go and do another photo shoot, right? 
But obviously, I want to try and point a bit more lean mass this time to get ready for the next photo shoot because I know exactly what's involved and I literally am going to go in and nail it this time. I really, really am. And I was expected. I know how to do the thing. I've got my meal prepping down to a T. And um, obviously, along alongside your website, your the pro website, I used to have my little spreadsheet as well that I'd be able to work out my macros and stuff. I compare the two, and I obviously, <clears throat> so what? Just you know, even now on a Sunday when I when I've got to um, do my meal plan, I quickly go in there, punch in what I need to do, work it out, and uh, my meal plan set. Breakfast is standard, lunch is standard. Dinners are pretty much freestyle at the moment. And um, touch wood, you know what? I've, I've, I know, like I said, I know my portion sizes now. Yeah, I know what I can and can't eat throughout the week. And uh, every week, I delve out another item that I look at another food that I want to eat off that list of foods that I haven't eaten. And I start looking into it and learning about it again. Amazing. How, how has it changed you as a dad? As a dad? <laughs> Inside, it's made me a lot happier now, losing all this weight. As I, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to live. No one knows, right? Let's just face it. When your time's up, your time's up. But I know I've done everything that I possibly can now to try to increase the longevity of my life, not just for me, but for my wife and my child, because I want to see them grow up. Yeah, but me as a dad, I feel young and vibrant and healthy now, not lethargic. I can run around with him. It's funny because when we take him to the nursery, his nursery must be about 1.5 kilometers from here. He jogs there. Yeah, because he likes running around. Believe it or not, his 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 walk is not a walk. He's like a fast, it's like a little you know a little baby baby hop, jump, skip. He's just full of energy. He is yeah, and that's me fast walking. I'm never out of breath anymore. I'm, that's another thing. Since I've lost all this weight, I'm just never out of breath. Getting my heart rate up to 125, 130 beats per minute. It's not easy anymore. I have to go out all attack, like on a hit session, just to get my heart rate up first, and then I can cruise. Otherwise, there are days I look at my watch and I think, is that what it is? There's something not right here. But resting heart rate, or when I saw my osteopath last, probably about six months ago, he had to check it three times. It was about 46 beats per minute, and um, he was shocked. 46? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And um, he said to me, he's known me, I think, for 20 years. The last time I walked in there, he looked at me. He had to look twice at me go, oh, my God. He goes, look at you. Because he's always known me as a strong man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he see me lose all that weight. And um, yeah, my average heart, resting heart rate when I'm asleep is about 48 beats per minute now. Amazing. And um, What's the blood pressure gone down from or was and now? Uh, mate, uh, the, the figures I obviously can't remember, but they're all, they're all, from what he said, I remember this, he goes, you're sort of an athlete now. He goes, I'm a fitness fanatic. And um, I've got the readings upstairs, believe it or not. I'll have to send them to you because I've got the machine. I haven't done it for ages. And then, but the, I was obviously regularly checking them I haven't checked them for about four months now, okay? And But I was regularly checking them every Sunday and they were always statically in green because of my life. Medi- I've got medical insurance at Pru Health and um, every time I used to key them in there as well, they'd always come back green. So um, they're always good. Perfect. So if you cast your mind back a few years, what almost, almost, almost kept you from starting and joining? What almost kept me from starting and joining? It's, I guess it's knowing, is it going to work or not? Yeah, you don't know, right? You, you, you've obviously got to have a bit of faith in what you're going to do. And when you, when you sign up uh, for one of these transformations, you see them online, you think, you know what, is this going to work? You're skeptical, aren't you? Mate, it's like when you watch the news, what's true and what isn't, you don't know if it's fabricated. Yeah. Obviously, you're out there selling a product, right? You're advertising this. And I think to myself, all right, there must be some truth in this because they're advertising this. Yeah. But then, you know, you'd obviously been posting so many things on Instagram and Facebook. And um, yeah, I just, I thought, let me sign up. There was obviously a lot of other people out there doing their bits as well, but obviously not as aggressive as you guys, you rather. And, uh, you know, with your, with your sales pitch and everything out there. But fair play to you, mate. You know what? It made me sign up and I did it, right? And obviously made my wife sign up as well. And, um, and other people that I know, I've obviously inspired them to go ahead with this whole fitness journey. So they've been doing it. When you know when you know what your when you know what your product does, it's it's uh yeah. it's, it makes things easy. I, I, what I say about your product, it's um if you follow it like you guys say, it's idiot proof, and that's the truth. You can do it. Anyone can lose weight if you really want to. Yeah, if you just adhere to the process, you're going to do it, and that's the truth. You know, I looked at looked at all of your the food, the macros. I worked out what your 150 grams of unaccounted veg were, and all sorts of things. Yeah, you know, all that in my head. Me being who I am. And I thought, you're actually 
you know, when they say to you eat 2,000 calories, you actually eat more than 2,000 calories, really. Think about it, because you've got the veg as well. But it's just a figure. And it's in your head as well now, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. If you're speaking to people that are starting now, I know you said you enjoy listening to the, the newbies kickstart their journey. They yeah. had a little segment from Duran right now. What, what, what do you want them to know and, or understand or hear right now to set them up for success? Engage your cohorts. Get involved with them. Inspire the others in your cohorts to get involved as well. Because in mine, it was just myself and Hemel. Um, I think I was the first one that started posting videos. And I was thinking, what? No one else is doing this. But you know what? Anyone listening out there, forget about that. This journey is about you. Yeah, not about them. If you do it, other people are going to follow suit. Or you're hoping they are, right? So that's one of the things. <clears throat> Engage your coaches. Trust the process. And importantly, keep posting those videos if you're training. Because you know what? No matter what you think, how well you're doing things, are you? You don't know. And um, every time I thought I was doing something right, I was constantly corrected. And, you know, all for the better, right? So, yeah, anyone who's new out there is listening, please, please, please make sure you engage your coaches, get involved with that cohort, join the Zoom calls, trust the process and nail it. Amazing. Uh, what's your Evolve Why now? What, are you, what's, what's in, what does the future hold? What does the investment phase hold? What does the future hold for me? Investment phase, next 16, 18 months, get as strong as I can. Yeah, put on some muscle now because um, obviously, like I said, I used to go at Genesis, obviously a strongman gym that is. And um, believe it or not, I was there in the gym today. Most of probably bench is 120 kilos in my life. You know, I've got eight reps out of that. I don't even know if I'll ever get there again. I don't know if I want to get there again. But one of my whys is I want to get as strong as I can again, but to the point where I can still maintain it as well and live a comfortable life, to remain injury-free and have that mobility there as well. There's no need to go to extremes anymore. But um, being a daddy at my age, at 50 years young, and um, running around with my son is going to be a big thing, you know, for me. And I can't wait for him to say, Daddy, 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 let's go to the gym. I'm going to take him straight in there, you know, and get involved. You know, it was uh, one day in hospital. It must have been about four or five months ago. <laughs> we were in hospital because he had a, had a high fever and it was he, we were in one of the rooms. He's gone up to one of the tables. He's running around because obviously the cowpaws kicked in. He's got hypo. He's gone up to the table underneath it. He's come up behind it and he's just, whoosh, he's just done that. Why did he pull up? He's gone, Daddy. And I was like, oh my God, did he just do this pull up? He just pulled himself up. And um, yeah, I never again would I thought I'd do, be doing pull ups again and um, wide grip pull ups and chin ups, because especially because of the bicep tear. Even though the consultant that did the work for me, he said to me, mate, you have no problems doing them. And uh, but at that weight, when you're 120 kilos, it's not happening, yeah? No. And um, but yeah, I hit 10, 10 chin ups the other day. Oh, amazing. So muscle ups are the next thing for me. <laughs> So, yeah, amazing. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story, Darren. Uh, no worries, man. Appreciate your honesty, uh, openness, and I know a lot of people are going to draw a lot of inspiration from your journey. I hope so.